All right, guys, so appreciate all the support as always. We are live on Rumble, sitting down with Michael Block. I want to thank our sponsor, bedinabox.com. You guys know I did the uh, sleep number commercial for the Super Bowl, but I can no longer sleep in that bed. It's a long, long story. So we got a new mattress. They have a 120-day risk-free trial. If you don't like the fucking bed, you send it right back. The code word is RIPPER10. 10% off what already is the sale going on in the site right now. So go to bedinabox.com, code word RIPPER10, and go uh, go buy a fucking mattress. Missionary only, though. You're only allowed to bang missionary in the mattress. That's it. Love you all. Enjoy the Michael Block episode, and thanks to bedinabox.com for sponsoring this episode. Let's go. All right, perfect. So here we are, Michael Block. Uh, I mean, the, probably the biggest story in sports right now. Would you agree? Uh, you know what? That's... It, it seems like it, but I don't know how it's even possible. Well, the crazy thing is, I, I obviously what I do for a living is social media. And so what I look at is the growth on just the numbers, especially like on Instagram, for instance. Before the tournament happened at Oak Hill, and we'll get to that in a minute, what was your following at prior? I think it was just about under 4,000. I got my couple, uh, you know, kids, and they were making sure and checking in on all the time. And I will never forget, I think it was after the Thursday round, we were all in the car, you know, we had like eight guys in the, in the Cadillac cruising to the course and, uh, we were, it, it hit 10,000 and we were like, dude, we just hit 10,000. It was crazy. People. Yeah. 10,000. And that was all because, cause in the first round, what did you, you shot what in the first 70, round? you shot 70 in the first round. Right. So I was in a pretty good spot after just the first round. Right. So how does one for people to understand, right? Cause there are people that watch our shit all the time that aren't really golf fans and understand how is a club pro is that? What yeah, I would, yeah, club, club, clubby, club pro, yeah. Club, club pro. Uh, <laughs> how does a club pro end up playing in the PGA Championship? Yeah, so uh, we're in a section, right? I'm in the Southern California section. And uh, in that section, we have a section championship. There's about 150 guys. You finish in about the top of 10 or 11, you make it to our national championship. Our national championship for the PGA of America is somewhere every year, somewhere else, right? Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, at the PGA Championship, there's 312 people. And uh, out of those 312 people, if you, it's a four-day event. It's on the Golf Channel. It's pretty cool. And uh, the top 20 guys uh, make it to uh, the PGA Championship. So it's pretty rad that uh, we are given this opportunity basically to be thrown into a major being normal dudes. Which is 20 guys like you in that championship? 20 guys like me, yeah. How did the rest of them fare? You got it. They just Occ couldn't fucking hit him. They're, they're no fucking Michael Block, that's for sure. Occasionally, you get a guy making the cut every once in a while. Basically, mm -hmm. you know, is what happens. Every couple of years, one of us makes the cut, and then you get last place. You know, you look and see. As soon as you make the cut, you're like, "Oh, what's last place get?" And you haven't even played the next two rounds. Right, and you're um, allowed. You're allowed to collect money, right? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. We're professionals. Yeah, absolutely. So you're a professional, and your payday. If you don't mind me asking, too, what what, what were you making prior to uh, all this stuff a year? I don't know if that's a personal question, but what were you making prior? Overall, in a year. Overall, in a year prior to this, let's say right around probably what I what I made in, in that in that check. Amazing. So in one in one four day tournament, you made your whole entire salary, and then yeah. probably I'm guessing, and then some with endorsement deals and whatnot. It's gone crazy. Yeah, it's gone absolutely crazy, and uh, I'm just trying to hold on right now. But yeah, it's definitely the biggest payday of my life, but hands down. The biggest one prior to that was seventy five thousand dollars. Wow. So what? Why do you think you played so well? I've been playing pretty good here for uh, the last year. I've always had the game kind of casual, having fun with the boys type of guy, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and when I go to tour events, I just choke like a chicken and, and play like crap. And uh, a couple years ago, I just started trying to be a lot more myself. Like I'm out with the boys, listening to music, having a good time, giving everyone a lot of crap. And uh, Are you drinking is before the round at all or no? Oh, hell no. No, you no, can't drink no, before. No, See, because no. I can't play unless I'm fucked up. Yeah, no. Obviously, the difference between Michael Block <laughs> and myself. But as soon as I get off that course, I got IPA in hand for sure. Yeah. You know what I didn't know either? Is is Michael had to uh, make on 18, the final day, you had to get up and down to make the cut? Uh, No. Um. Order from kegandbottle.com today and enjoy 15% off your next purchase with code BLOCK. With over 8,000 different SKUs and variations, we offer an extensive selection of liquor, beer, wine, and more bottles for you to choose from. We ship to 48 out of 50 states, delivering straight to your door. Cheers to the convenience, variety, and great savings. Kegandbottle.com, boys, go check it out. Code is BLOCK, B-L-O-C-K. Now let's get back to uh, the show. I fucked up a little bit, so let's resume operation. No, 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 my research. No, 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 no. I, I shot 70-70, so I made the cut by a lot. Oh, you made the cut by a lot. Yeah, I would think I was in 
20th or something after okay, two cool. rounds going into it, which was insane okay. for a club pro. I think it was like the first time in 20, 30 years that a club pro was in that position after two days. So after you made the cut, you're guaranteed how much money? I think it's like maybe 25, 30 grand. And is that when everything started going crazy with all the, yeah, the clicks lot, and all lot, that stuff? Yeah, a lot of people started liking my stuff on that. I was on the... Uh, it was cool. So at the beginning of the week, they're like, hey, would, they picked me out of the 20. Before anything happened, they picked me out of the 20 pros to throw a mic on me and to get interviewed while you're playing in the middle of the major. It'd li be literally like throwing on Steph Curry in the middle of a NBA finals. They or something like that. They mic'd me up wow. walking up the entire hole. And I had Scott Van Pelt the first day, and then I had Jim Nance. They asked, so I did it the first day with SVP, and then uh, it went really well. And uh, that blew me up quite a bit. And then the next day they said, hey, would you do it again and, and have Jim Nance interview you while you're doing it? And I'm just like going, is this even real, dude? And that's when it's like this like whole bunch of surreal stuff started happening. Yeah. And uh, so then I got interviewed by Jim. I make Birdie doing it right in front of it all. Yeah, yeah it was crazy. Is and that mandatory? Like, do they come up no, to you and not, say, they you have you, to put this on? Not at all, not at all. It's, it's something where a lot of the guys don't want to do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and for me, I'm like, yeah. I, I told him, I said, I do it all 18 holes. I don't care. Like you, I, you, should be getting, you should be getting the big bucks because to be my opinion right now, I think that you just save the PGA tour for a decent uh, period of time here yeah. with all the shit going on with live and everything like that. Yeah. There's been a lot of weird things going on in the golf world here in the last couple of years since that's been going down. And mm -hmm. you know, I mean, everyone just kind of, seems like clamoring over all this money here and there and stuff like that. And I think it was just like more of a feel good story that Joe Schmo, Michael block comes out of nowhere mm -hmm. and beats a whole bunch of boys out of, you know, a good place and a good spot. And, the funniest part in the world, I was just doing some interviews, and uh, they told me that I have world, I, what do I have? I have Ryder Cup points. Really? I have Ryder Cup points. I was ask, I'm what's like, your world rank? Do you have a world rank Yeah, yet? so I went from like 3,250, like the highest you can be. I, I think I don't think there's even a higher <laughs> ranking than what I am, and so uh, or what I was, and I, I moved up over 3,000 spots, and I'm now ranked like 550th in the world. That's not bad. Yeah, so for one event, right? And then uh, the crazy part is I'm now number 90-something on the Ryder Cup point list. So you might fucking play in the Ryder Cup. No, nah, there's no way in God's green earth. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I would have to have pretty... The captain's choice. Dude, you know, uh, I had a great conversation with Zach Johnson actually the last couple of days, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Were your, were your expectations were your expectations going into this thing when you're teeing off on hole one on the first day? Are you just your mentality is not obviously is it to win the tournament? Is it to make the cut? Yeah, a couple of interviews I did before it. Uh, just the whole deal was to be the low club pro. So they had this award, right? Which is badass. If you're the low club professional, all those twenty cats, right? Yeah. And it doesn't even matter if you make the cut, but it's even a hell of a lot better if you do make the cut. Right. So if you're the low club professional, you are actually on the green during the ceremony with whoever wins. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you might have seen it, when I when Brooks was out there getting his trophy, they actually handed me the trophy first, and then Brooks and I are standing right next to each other getting our awards. Right. And so that was my big goal at the beginning of the week was just be low, low club pro, go out there on that uh, green and uh, represent PGA of America and, and, and show that. And I did that and uh, a little bit more, so it was pretty cool. All right, and then you go to the final day. You have all the attention in the world on you, and then you get to what hole was it where you made the hole in one? Oh, 15. 15. I mean, the Dude. craziest fucking moment yeah. probably of yeah. all time yeah. is when Michael Block makes a fucking hole in one with especially all the other, because a lot of this, you know, the hype will build when they're trying to build a story and all that. But I mean, to step up like that, do you think without that hole in one, is this story different? Oh, yeah. I think that and then the up and down on 18, uh, where I had a lot going there that I didn't know about. But that up and down on 18 was pretty epic. But yeah, that... I've never made a hole in one in a tournament in my life. So, mm -hmm. and I've played thousands of tournaments. Mm -hmm. So for that to happen and for the ball, just literally like, like the angels grabbed it in the sky and just dunked Dunked it right it. in the hole, man. I mean, it's insane. Right. And, uh, for that to happen at that moment and that crowd was on board with me a hundred percent. And so I got up on the tee. Rory goes first, he misses the green and he's dead where he's at. I'm just like, Oh man. Cause that green's brutal, dude. If you go left in the bunker, no chance in hell. You're making, you might be start playing ping pong on this thing. Mm -hmm. And Rory's dead where he's at. I'm just like, Oh my God. Okay. Seven iron, just get it on the green. It's more my thought. And so they're cheering for me before I even hit. They're on their feet cheering, knowing that I'm up on the tee now yeah. and it is packed. And, uh, all the sponsor tents are there and all this stuff. And, uh, I, so they quiet down. I hit the shot. And they start cheering again. And so I'm like, hey, standard issue. You know, I'm like, oh, this is cool. There's cheering and whatever else. And all of a sudden, Rory turns around and he looks at me like just, I mean, his eyes are like this. And 
And he comes over to me. He's like, and he puts out his arms. <laughs> I'm like, what the f is going on right now? And so he comes over. He hugs me. He goes, dude, it went in the hole. No fuck. With way. a cool, with a cool Irish accent. And uh, I was like, no, it didn't. I'm like, it did not go in the hole, bro. And right. uh, he's like, it went in the hole. Yeah. And uh, I look at all the volunteers. I'm like, did it go in the hole? And they're like, that place must have been going oh, fucking dude, nuts, bro. And so I start walking down. And I'm like looking around, and everyone is. Dude, these big grown men are hugging each other and throwing <laughs> beer all over Titties themselves. are coming out and everything like Dude, that. Dude, it was awesome, yeah. man. I mean, it gives me the chills right now even thinking about that moment. And, yeah, for it to happen, that circumstances and that day. And What, cl- what club did you hit? It was a seven iron from, like, 152, which doesn't sound like very much, but it was into the that breeze. Doesn't sound, Michael, that doesn't sound like Yeah, that. I, I That's a little weak. It was a pitching wedge. Yeah, there um, you go. But the, the club actually itself, because I did my Google research, yeah. as you can tell, as I already botched the first uh, you know, oh, good. thing I said. Uh, the the club itself is getting a little traction for uh, some De Niro. Yeah, I'm, I think I... Is there a I'm, bidding I'm, thing yeah, going on? Yeah, there is. Yeah, they want Did it. you secretly go on eBay that night and put it on yeah, eBay? Yeah, I got a couple offers in on it. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to build it up. But. You have to build it up. So the club... Well, I mean, I, I, my audience might want to... I got some rich fucks that follow me. They might want to up it. Dude, hey, John, will you do me a favor and grab that 7-iron? Uh, you, you we have go. To, Let's, you, I'm going to sell you, it. You have to see this thing, dude. It is... If you saw this thing in a garage sale, you wouldn't spend more than $10 for it. No, no, no. That thing is going up to I'm, 100 I'm, I don't care what it's at right I'm, now. I'm telling you right now, this thing, it uh, it is, I think, 12 or 13 years old. All, all my irons are just exactly like this. I mean, so I got like 50000 in my hand right now. Yeah. Wow, look at this bet. Wow, this is a shitty-ass club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What it's, is this thing? It's 12, 13 years old. It's a tailor-made MC, I think, from 2011. That's the club right there that's worth... Uh, X amount of dollars here. Yeah. And then the shaft, as you can see, you can't even see the shaft label, what it is. The grip's been on there for three years. They they were trying to make me put a new grip on at the beginning of the week because they're so bad. And I was like, oh, hell no. You know, normally, you know, when I come in and do a podcast, people usually sometimes give me a gift. I had a gift for you too, but <laughs> sometimes people give me a gift. I just want to let you know, but hey, I'm not going no, to make, make you do that. So. Yeah, I appreciate it. Here's the uh, say, Would you yeah. sell it though? You got to sell it. It's all about yeah. the cash. Fuck yeah. that. Though. You can't, I, don't mount I it on mean, the wall. Don't do, just take the cash. From what I'm hearing, it actually might go in like a type of a golf museum type of thing. Really? Yeah. They want to buy it and put it in a museum. Right. Really? Which to me would be a lot cooler than going to a, a collector who I will never see at that thing again. So if that can be seen a lot by uh, people who are fans of golf and PGA members and stuff like that, that'd be pretty rad. How the hell does Michael Jordan end up contacting you? Uh, well, so I'm, I, you know, my Nike connections, they... Uh, they contact he i don't know how he did but nike uh yesterday they contact me and they're like they're like uh you know michael texts you right i'm like what no way once again i'm like dude are you serious and i literally have ten thousand texts and i'm just sitting there because half of them are just random numbers right half of them are people like i see the names and whatever else and i don't have michael jordan in my contacts so i've been going through all the randoms did you at least save them did you save him as Michael oh, Jordan? Oh, hell, dude, that was probably the coolest thing <laughs> of my life. I'm like, Michael, I'm like, I can't believe I'm freaking doing this right now, man. I'm like, this is crazy. You're like leaving it on the table? Dude. You're just like, just unfollow uh, all the other Oh, Jordan. yeah, yeah. I'm like, dude, look at this, guys. You know, no, I, it was, it, it's cool, man. I mean, that guy's my idol, as he is a lot of guys and, and a lot of people in this world. So uh, for him to be contacting me and notice me and notice the fact I'm, I'm, I was wearing my Jordans out there uh, playing the PGA Championship, which I just... People are always like, you play in those? I'm like, dude, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't play in anything else. I would have got straight to business. I would have said, Mike, listen, you know, I, where's where's the deal at? <laughs> no. That's what I would have done. No, I'm good. I'm good. These things that I could I, I can play in these for for free or money. It doesn't matter. I don't wanna I don't wanna invade on any I, I really yeah. respect text privacy and all that, but can you give us at least how Michael Jordan opens up a text yeah. on what he says? Is it yo it's MJ? Is it uh the nitty gritty of it is that he basically said, "This is why I love the game of golf." Amazing. Yeah, that's what he came out with, which was like cool, man. It's like heartfelt, touched him, and like kind of what I've seen from everybody. I mean, he's a normal dude, right? I mean, mm-hmm. he's just really darn good at basketball, and it's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, so it was really cool to say the least. So this, this like, uh, uh, do you want to call this a viral moment? I, I don't know if it's viral. It's just I think it's the oh, it's fucking viral. Okay, cool. It's viral. But so if we do call it this viral moment, because I, th- I I also want to give you credit too, because you've been playing golf your whole life, you've been on a golf course your whole entire life, so there is a extreme skill aspect I think to to what you accomplish. So don't let anybody take that away from you. I don't think right. But I think with this viral moment, what I'm always curious is how do, how do you get this and turn this into something now where I think the whole 
club pro thing as much as you probably love to do it. I'm guessing that it's going to maybe now transition to a different form of business. What's the strategy? And if you had enough time to really, because you probably have everybody in your ear right now saying, hey, we want you to wear this jet. Do this, do that, do this for us. So how do you kind of continue this moment and stretch it out as long as you can for this viral moment? Because you know how fast the internet is. It's insane. Yeah. I mean, I went straight from New York. I thought I was going home. Then the next day here, I'm on a private jet to to Dallas, you know, and then I'm here yesterday. They uh, invite me to be in Germany next week at the Porsche Masters. Fuck yeah. um, I'm not going. I'm I. I can't, you know, it's just, I got so much on my plate and I really do actually want to get back to my office and get my stuff done, my work done. I'm not the type of guy that just loves just leaving things aside. I need to get that stuff done. I mean, I've already talked to to Jeff and Matt, you know, my, my boss is back at the club and they understand that it might just need to be kind of slightly reworked a little bit as far as my responsibilities, but by no means do I want to just leave my club and go do something else. That's and awesome. I don't want to go, go be a tour pro. I don't want to do that. I've always told everybody and and they're going to know now it's true. Uh, I don't want to go be on tour full time, be out there for 35 weeks a year doing that. Uh, I enjoy my life too much, hanging out with my boys and and being at home and going to the backyard, having a glass of wine or a beer and throwing a ball to my dog. That's that's what I'm into. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to change. But at the same time, it's just going to be all good. It's going to be better. You know, everything's going to be good. It's going to be cool. So you give uh, you 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 one of the responsibilities, I'm guessing, for being a tour pro uh, or a club pro. Yep. Um, is you got to give lessons. Oh yeah. Yeah. I give, yeah. I, and it's cool. I, I've got about 12 people, honestly, that I've, I've narrowed it down to over the last couple nice. of years. Now so it's 20,000, but yeah. well, no, I, yeah. Now you have like I, a I, webinar. Dude, you know? Yeah. Well, it's, it's cool. But I mean, I just give lessons, honestly, to the people that I dig, you know, the people that I'm like, I want to spend an hour with you mm -hmm. and I just get lucky enough to get paid for it. But that's, mm -hmm. that's all I do. I don't give lessons to to make a whole bunch of money to do something like that. And people keep on asking me if I'm going to raise my rate of 150 bucks an hour. You gotta, you no, have to. Yeah, I, Michael, you have to. You I, have to. You I, deserve I, it. You fucking grinded it out I, for four days at Oak Hill. You fucking played your ass off. You deserve it. You got to raise. It. I'm I, thinking you're now like a 1500 an hour guy. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. I love your, right? thought. I love your thoughts. I'm your Bob. agent now. I'm I like taking that. over. I like that. That's good. We got to talk. Um, yeah. Yeah. No. I I don't know. It's just like I, I can't imagine. I don't think lessons are worth more than that, man. I think 150 bucks, no matter how good that lesson is, it's yeah. that's about what you should be getting when you're given a lesson. So uh, that's that's how I roll. Player caddy relationship is really extremely important, right? Absolutely huge, huge, right? I caddied for five years. I was the shittiest caddy on the planet. I was just only out there to serve drinks and just be a personality and be a good time. That's, I didn't know that's anything. That's a good about the, caddy. That's a great caddy, right? I was gonna say that doesn't sound like a bad caddy. That's to me. a great caddy. But when you get to the level you're at, so who was your uh, caddy during the event? Yeah, John Jackson. Um, He's the he's a guy. He's a stud golfer. He's one of the NorCal am or the NorCal uh, professional event up there. I mean, he's a pro for a long time. Traveled the world. Was in Asia a long time. Um, stud golfer that is up at Pebble Beach full time now as a caddy. And I just happened to go up there and play in an event up there a couple years ago. And John's my caddy. Stud. We had a great time. We get together. He's super chill. Um, always talking about fun things outside of golf in between the shots, mm -hmm. and, which is great. We get along great. Um, and he puts up with any of my crap, and, I, you know, it, it's awesome. And uh, so last year I brought him to Southern Hills. I was on the PGA Championship last year in Southern Hills, and uh, he came out and caddied in the practice rounds because my kid couldn't do it at that point. My kid caddied in the tournament but couldn't do the practice rounds. So John came. He, he killed it. I almost fired my my kid on Wednesday because he's being a butthead. Yeah. And almost I was like, dude, I'm going to put John on the bag, and whatever. It didn't happen last year. Mm -hmm. So I called John this year when I qualified. I'm like, dude, do you want to be on the whole, you know, be on it? And uh, he said, uh, absolutely. And so he, he rolled out here not here, but up to New York. And, uh, with his, his portion of that check, he's able to, um, get rid of his, uh, student loan. So it's pretty badass. So that's amazing. Was your, was your deal with him as percentage of the, yes. Yes. okay, cool. Yeah. Nice. Was it a Matt Kuchar percentage or was it a standard standard? It's, it's a standard, uh, tournament percentage. Yeah. Okay. That's amazing. Is he back on the bag this week or he no? He is absolutely. He's he, back again. He called his girlfriend and got the okay. It's a cruise, girlfriend. Cruise of course, you get here. the girl came from the girlfriend. The wife's a different level. The girlfriend, you have yeah. to ask. You just show up. Yeah, well, I think they're pretty close to that, too. But whatever it was, I really appreciate she let me use John for another week. And uh, we're down here in Texas. Hopefully, uh, this time he can, uh, we do well enough where he can go buy something else other than uh, paying off bills. You know, I want him to go buy himself a nice new car or something. So, what do you think as far as just the going into, uh, we're at Colonial? Yes. Here? Okay. So, going into Colonial, have you played here before? Do you know the course at all? Never played here in my life, and I only, I'm only getting one round. 
Yeah, so I only got yesterday. Went around there with a couple of buddies and uh, cruised around. Course is great. Fits my eye. It's not super long. The rough looks like nothing compared to last week. Mm-hmm. Greens are fast, um, and I guess it gets super windy out here. But uh, course fits my eye, and I'm not playing the pro tomorrow. I'm just going to chill tomorrow morning here. I'm just going to relax uh, and then go out there and try to kill it tomorrow afternoon. Do you have, uh, do you have as far as uh, uh, you're teeing off at what time tomorrow, do you know? I'm like 142 or something, so I got a great, it's called late early. So I'm late tomorrow and then early Friday, which is the optimal deal. So you're not standing, sitting around doing nothing in between your tee times. Are you, do you understand going in that you are the biggest story in, in golf right now? It's absolutely nuts. That yeah. Is that sunk in? It's nuts. Well, I got all these guys that you know, I look up to so much, like Jordan Spieth and Ricky all coming up to me. I mean, everybody's coming up to me over there. and uh, All nice guys? Every single guy I've ran into has been nothing but fantastic. Yeah, I there just, has to be a couple I assume, assholes. I assume, a couple I, well, assholes I assume the assholes are the ones that don't come up to me. So. Right, right. So there was those guys that just probably just <laughs> yeah, walked Yeah, they just kind of walked by. I don't know. Maybe they're shy or assholes. I, I can't tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's no, there's no need to to not be that. So you're 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 going to be, I mean, tomorrow I think that I'm going to the tournament. And by the way, I, I think that I can speak for Because when I, when I, everybody said to me, when they're like, you want to Dallas-Fort Worth? I had no anticipation of doing a podcast at all. You know, we pop this stuff. I mean, see these two guys? I don't even fucking know who they are. And they're in your house. I just stuck them together and we're doing a, we're doing a show. But everybody was like, get Michael block, get Michael block. You have the entire world behind you, which is, which is incredible. And I think that you've already just exceeded expectations like crazy, but obviously you're a competitor. We can tell and whatnot. So wish you the best of luck with that. But I want to ask you about real quick playing with Rory. Yeah. So playing with Rory McIlroy, you find out the final day. Yeah. You're playing with Rory. That was crazy. There's a lot of, is there, because I've never got to be where you are. Is there a lot of commute, like shit like you like fucking talking to Rory? Oh, or, yeah. Is uh, shit talking I, I mean, No, we're not shit talking. Oh, but, right. uh, no, 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 no. It's no, no fun then. No, yeah, no, I I'd mean. I'd be fucking, if I had one round with Rory, I'd be fucking <laughs> in his ear just just everything uh, I could do to fuck him up. Yeah, no, no, I wouldn't. I, I was, you know, I was pretty intimidated for a while. I, I pretty much just looked at his shoes and made sure that I didn't look up and realize I'm really playing with Rory McIlroy. And then I definitely, I mean, if you watch on the first heat, I mean, I literally turn around. Mm-hmm. I don't watch that ball flight. I don't watch that guy just absolutely hit it freaking 60 yards by me, right? I mean, it's intimidating. So so what's he, the difference between his game on, would you, I mean, you'd assume that Rory's a better golfer than you are? He's a lot longer than I am. That's what it is. Okay, so that the, the length is the big thing. Oh, my God. What I would shoot from where Rory hits it would be stupid. What, I, what I, is I, the think compar- be, I think I'd be f- one of the best players in the world. How Really? Hands down. Oh, if I had if I had that stupid length, I all all day, my 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 iron game, wedge game, around the greens, and my putting is 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 world class. It's just that the the distance, I'm not to her distance. You know, these guys are hitting it 300 yards in the air. I hit it 275 in the air, maybe no, here when boy. it's hot. I'm gonna hit that ball out here. You know, I'm gonna get it on the ground at like 260 and roll it out to 320 out here, but. So when they have all the dots that they show, they're all up there. Oh, yeah, You're the, the one that's back there. Yeah, I'm that one back there. Yeah, that, yeah. We gotta fix. We yeah. gotta fix that t- by tomorrow. Yeah, no, I, I just, it's 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 plenty long in the club professional world, mm-hmm. tour world. I mean, I'm playing against, dude. I'm playing against the top 100 players in the world. You know, so it's it's a whole different animal. So the call you got from, uh, did you know with all the hype and everything like that going on, did you know you were gonna get a call with somebody whispering here from the Charles Schwab organization that called you? No idea. And so your phone rings. I literally just walked into that room. I had uh, some Casamigos sitting on there. They asked me, they asked me because they knew I was going to be a low club pro. So they preemptively knew no matter whether I shot 80 that final round or 71, mm-hmm. I'm a low club pro. So they had this room, this boardroom set up for me and my family and my friends to have some drinks and enjoy and then go out and do what we need to do. And so they asked me what I wanted. I said, put some Casamigos out there. I said, I want IPAs in that cooler You're over like, there. You're like, this is over. It's done. We're dude, done it, here. It We're was just bad ass, dude. And so I'm sitting there. If you see it, I'm sitting there. I got a beer and I got a Casamigos just chilling. And uh, yeah, and then all of a sudden, uh, someone from the PGA of America hands me that phone. And I'm like, oh, huh, okay. And then as soon as he said, hey, this is, you know, Michael from uh, Charles Schwab Challenge, I was like, oh, God. I, yeah. knew, I, knew, I knew it right away at that point. And then literally... I don't know, 30 minutes later, an email comes through that the RBC Canadian Open has invited come. me. And then uh, then the next day, I'm invited to the Swiss Masters uh, over in Switzerland in September, which is, just looks like a rad tournament that I've watched on TV in the past, which would be cool. And uh, they got to pay you on top of that to come, though. No, well, no, it, it depends. No, they got As your agent, they got to pay you on top. So they got to give you like 25 grand to come out there on top just to play. You're a big name now. You got you to play aggressive. Yeah, everyone. Has kind of different deals from what I'm seeing. Yeah, you know, yeah. so it is what it is, and uh, 
I'll just do what's best for uh, my family and my work and and me, so I don't wear myself out. I had to say no, which I apologize to the uh, Porsche event in Germany mm -hmm. next week because I'm going to Canada after that. I couldn't play four weeks in a row and stuff like that. I need to go back home next week, no matter what, and uh, put my ducks in a row. Family's important to you. Hell yeah, family's the most important. The thing. most important thing. Quick thing, your interaction with the wife. What was your first uh, communication with your wife after the tournament? Was she was there. She almost choked me out there. Yeah, on the 18th uh, green as I was walking out. <laughs> I mean, she legitimately, I'm like, honey. She I'm was like, like, make that fucking putt. Dude. Make that fucking putt. Oh, $75,000 difference. She knew. She knew the difference. Yeah. I didn't know what, the, I didn't even know what I was putting for. I knew it was, I knew it was large though. There was a calculator. Did you see that when they cut over to, she had a calculator out? I she bet was she actually did. checking in the calculator. You must know Val then. You definitely know her, dude. <laughs> she's, she is the, uh, she's frugal. And she, yeah, she was counting every penny. Um, yeah. I didn't know. I'm sure she knew what it was. And if I would have known that was worth 70 grand, I probably would have whiffed it. Mm -hmm. um, but thank God, I don't know if you saw it, but it barely dripped in. The, I mean, I thought I left it short. It was on the right it, side of the hole? Yeah, right front center. And, it, uh, and, it, just and it just dropped in. And that's why I kind of bent over. I'm just like, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty damn cool. I love it. Well, let me see real quick. I know you got to get going because yeah. we don't want to take too much no, you're, time you're for good. here. But uh, I, I think that, you know, with, with any, like, moment like this, whatnot, I mean, do you ever have any – I, I see – People, this is what I see. I see you being the, I don't want to say happy Gilmore. <laughs> that sounds like really, that's like kind of a slap in the face. But I feel like yeah. there's such a moment that this whole, I mean, I all I hear is people saying block party, yeah. the block t-shirts and all this stuff. And when right. is the merch coming out? We need Michael Block merch. You know, it's kind of funny. You know who's trying to head that up? Who's that? My kid. Really? Yeah, my kid's, I, my kid's trying to do that. I'd probably find a different person to handle it, but again, <laughs> I, know. I don't know your. No, I don't no, know your, I, that's a, it's kind of funny you said that. Yeah, I talked to somebody and they're like, "Oh, we can handle this thing," but I'm like, "Yeah, but my kid needs to be the one, you know, kind of." He can lead the up. charge, but yeah, like yeah, all yeah. the, you know, I don't want to. For sure, I don't, I don't want to fucking. Uh, For sure, I don't yeah. want to knock your kid down here in any way, shape, or form. But it is what it is. All right, so you have, uh, you, you did have though. I did I, what I specialize in is I do commentary videos. So no matter how great your week was, you did have. Uh, you did have a you did have a very poor shot at one point, I think, right? Michael Block trying to bounce back at the par three fifth. Oh, oh my no. gosh. Oh, he just shanked it. That is a shank. Oh, I hosled the hell out of it, man. I hit the I think a lot of people started gravitating towards me after I hosled it into the trees. Did you guys know he fucking shanked the ball uh, up there? I don't want to put that in your in your in dude, your I had to play the next like thirty three holes with every single shot I hit going. Do not freaking do that again. Wait, so you actually, because my fear is for like an average golfer, and I think that a lot of people can relate, is when all these people are standing right there, you know? I almost killed a couple guys. Really? I mean, it came off of that eight iron so hot and right, and it was lined with people. I mean, it just skimmed over their heads. It was going into the street. And it hits this tree. Street is out of bounds? Yeah. yeah, Oh, yeah. So you got saved. And, and, yeah, it hits this tree, and it kicks kind of, and I mean, I don't think I even made it past the ladies' tee. And I'm in the rough, in this six-inch deep rough, not even past the ladies' tee. I'm still like 120 yards out still. And I chunk it out of this crap, get into the front bunker, hit it on the green, and then three-putt, I think, and make a, I, mean, what I, mean, I think I made, a, I made a double. You made a double. Yeah, it was like I saved a double. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and, in your head now? Because like oh. for an average golfer, like when I'm playing for like, you know, 20 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever it is, that's all I hear in my head is shank, shank, Trust shank. me. Oh, my God. That last one on hole 18, because a lot of times when those, that happens is when the ball's below your feet. Mm -hmm. And uh, on hole 18, when I have that lob wedge, that ball's a foot and a half below my feet, and I'm in the rough, into the grain. I've got all these people lining around me, and i got these little kids standing, you know, 10 feet to my right. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, dude, I'm like, just Dude, just don't I, do I mean, I don't know where it, it, I hit it on the on the club, but I'm pretty sure I hit it off the toe. Yeah, I would need a lot of room. Yeah, I'd just be yeah, like, everybody dude. step back. I uh, know I hit it up. Yeah, I, I made sure not to hit it off the toe there, and it, and it worked out great. So you went super viral. Uh, you had all this thing. It was success, whatever. What you did, just did this week, but when you go out, so the tournament's over now. The first thing you do is, do you go out and get fucked up like I would have, or you have a better head on your shoulders? Oh no, we. Dude, Fleetwood, yeah, I, don't, I posted a uh, great <laughs> Fleetwood Mac. We were just absolutely, because we were singing a lot of uh, Fleetwood Mac down the fairways, literally. John, my caddy, was literally singing to me. That's your caddy? Yeah, that's my caddy right there. Oh, yeah, man, I, yeah. I would love, I mean, after, am I allowed to have after you're done five minutes with him? A hundred percent. I would love that. Absolutely. absolutely. I would love to have five minutes yeah. with John. We got to give John his, uh, his, his I, you I agree. Know? That'd be fantastic. And, uh, yeah, no, no, I went and back, and I, all of our friends, I was supposed to go to this pub, because I told this, you know, this, this pub, I'm, I'm like, I'm going to the Pittsburgh pub now. And and I guess there were like six, seven camera crews waiting for me to show up at the Pittsburgh pub. 
they want to catch you fucked yeah. up walking yeah. out. And, and, they yeah. want to make and a so story. I already had a little tequila and some IPAs at the club, <laughs> and I'm driving back, and I'm like, let's go to the Pittsburgh pub. <laughs> and, uh, and and like my team there, they're like, uh, it's closed. I'm like, what? Yeah. I'm like, it's closed? I'm like, it's 9 o'clock. And uh, they're like, yeah, it's closed. And uh, I'm like, oh. I'm like, okay, fine. And so we go back to the house, and there we had a ton of wine and some beers and a whole mm -hmm. bunch of pizza. And just, I mean, I don't dance because I'm a bad dancer, but I was dancing, singing. Why the fuck wouldn't you? I mean, dude, I was having so much fun. The whole crew was, everyone was. And uh, the next day, I'm like, I was getting interviewed, and they asked me about it. They're like, yeah, do you know there's a whole bunch of camera crews waiting for you to show up to the, at the pub? And uh, I go, what? I go, didn't it close? And like, no, it closed like a midnight. They're waiting for you. I go, Probably better you I, didn't go. I felt so bad, but yeah, it would have been. It, it would have been a shit, shit show. It would have been the Tom Brady clip yeah, walking yeah. out all fucked up. Yeah, it would have been and, crazy. And that would have been. But you get are you getting noticed now when you go out around here and going out to dinner? Have you gone out to dinner and getting noticed? Everywhere. Now they they come up and they ask you for pictures. Everywhere. You can't really be a dick though, right? You got to be. I'm not naturally a dick. I'm naturally pretty nice. Actually, I was gonna say I talked to your guys. <laughs> and they said Michael has not turned down one picture he's not turned out he's been you know kissing babies and yeah. signing titties yeah. and doing all this shit all the stuff i like to do all the shit you like to do well michael i know that you have a, a big day tomorrow i want to sit for five minutes with your caddy if only you want to is that cool but i want to wish you the best of luck tomorrow you have i mean there's so many people that reached out to me that were like dude we just fucking got this guy's back you truly are the fucking people's champion hey, which thanks. is which is amazing we wish you so much luck tomorrow and we'll be fucking there Hey, Bob, I, I appreciate you, man. I want you out there having a great time and uh, hopefully see me hit a couple of decent shots. And, uh, dude, I came on uh, so solely. You were so gracious and so cool to my kids at Riviera. Gosh, I don't know. It might have been five, six years ago. You were you were there. My kids loved you. Um, I loved you, too, your, your, your deal. And uh, you came up and you took a picture with them, and I really appreciate that. And that's why I made sure to make this thing happen. Make sure we clip that moment, okay, guys? Make sure we clip that. That's important. Okay, you're the best. Cheers. I wish you so much fun tomorrow. Let's bring in. I want to get a picture with you. We'll kind of stop. We'll do something. You have to be with him during the night. Yeah, yeah. Five minutes. With you? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's cold? funny. That's Love perfect. Five minutes. Yep. You're the man, Michael. You're the man. Everything was good. I like it. Yeah, we're gonna we're we're we're, we're gonna grill him. Oh, dude, yeah. Oh. All right, John, so we want all the darkest oh. secrets about Michael now. Oh, all right, boy. now that you're on the mic. Jeez. We're going to keep rolling. All right, so we'll, we'll do five real quick. So we know you got to practice. Um, what the fuck here? What, what the fuck just happened? I uh, still have no idea. Uh, it's, it was an uh, insane, insane ride. Have you been uh, catting your whole life? Uh, I've been, no, I haven't been catting. I've been catting on and off different places for probably about, 15 or so years um but yeah a few tour events here and there but nothing like that that was insanity so when does when does michael seek advice from you if if at any time because a lot of players sometimes they just do their own thing sometimes they call you in uh to... just like for shots and stuff he does most of his own stuff on the greens and then we have a few keywords we use of you know just tempo stuff like that mm -hmm. and then uh other than that once the shots hit we're off, head down, straight ahead. Um, we just on to the next one. Talk about something else besides golf. After, no, dude. No, I heard you were a great, amazing that. singer. Me. That's what I heard. Yeah, yeah. It's I terrible. heard that you are the Leonard Skinner. It's especially of, in the rain, it felt like I was in the shower. Yeah, great. yeah. So going in tomorrow, I'm assuming that you walked the course up and down ten times over already, and are prepared to give yeah, Michael fifteen the, for sure. Fifteen yeah, times. Yeah. Do you know Colonial? No, never been. Great. Here yeah. we go. Yeah, right. we'll figure it out. I got a great yardage <laughs> truck. <laughs> we'll see what happens. That's on him. I love it. And so this is uh, this is something. You got the approval from your girlfriend. Yeah. You're here. It wasn't tough. It wasn't tough? No. Well, how did that call go down with your girlfriend? No, no. I say, I'll see you next week. Hopefully. Maybe we'll be on another event. See, that's an alpha male right there. <laughs> for me, I would have been crying in tears and being begging her for to, to, it didn't quite go like to that, let me come in. Know. Yeah. So, uh, you know, did you see with Michael himself, was his men mentality and his focus the same throughout from start to finish? Were there times where he seemed a little bit? Uh, you know, Well, obviously, after the shank, it got a little, it could have gone south pretty quickly. But, no, he was level-headed. He, uh, you know, just... Crew, we used the word tempo a lot. We were just walking the same, doing the same, just trying to just cruise along. Like he, like he said, like he was playing with the boys back at home. Mm -hmm. didn't, uh, didn't try to do too much. How excited are you for this week? Oh, it's going to be fun. I'm ready to do it again. 
I, as soon as we walked off the 18th green of the final round, I was like, can we go do that again right now? Right. And uh, yeah, here we are. So it's going to be an amazing, yeah. amazing, amazing journey. Like yeah. I said, I just want to get you on here because I feel that caddy player, you always got to get your props. You always got to get your respect. <laughs> so I wanted to get it, you on here. Yeah. You boys go, go have fun, go warm up. I appreciate you guys taking the time. I drank out your fridge. I apologize. There'll <laughs> no be worries. a door dash on the way here later. Awesome. But awesome. Uh, you're the man, brother. Thank Good luck you, tomorrow. All right. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you.